Welcome to uh, Gallifrey Pirate Radio, um, and we have a treat for you because we're taking uh, the Who Mobile back in time. time. We're riding the TARDIS back. Yeah, the Who Mobile. Oh, That's like better. The TARDIS. Well, there's a reason why it's the Who Mobile. I know there's a reason why it's the Who Mobile. Yes, we're we're going back and we're talking about episode or, episode, or story or story number seventy one, Doctor Who Invasion of the Dinosaurs. Yes. Um, very much a classic, uh, Sarah Jane and John Pertweed, uh, Doctor Who story. Um, uh, first appearance of the Who Mobile. And it's right after, and it was actually one of the first episodes in color, too, I believe. Or when they really started doing them all in color. Yeah, um, it's, uh, also, also like, I think the third story as well. With Sarah Jane, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's the third third Sarah Jane story, if I remember correctly. Um, the first being the Time Warrior, um, where she thought uh, the Doctor was a villain, which is absolutely brilliant. Which we we gotta talk about that episode sometime. Well, yeah, but right now we're doing a major. I dinosaurs. know. I'm just saying. If you so, can tell, she likes dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs, but this episode is really cool because if you watch it, the first story is in black and white. Yes. And then all the other ones are in color, so... It, yeah, but they do have a, a colorized version of the first episode. But for the DVDs and stuff, they kind of left it that way because they didn't want it to look really... Yeah, well, I mean, you, you, you have the option of watching it in, in, in the new colorized version mm -hmm. or in the black and white. And I'll say this much, it's better watching in black and white than the colorized. I watched the colorized, not bad, but once you see the actual color episodes... Yeah, you see the huge difference, so it's better to watch that first episode in black and white. Um, but but if you if you actually put it play all, they play the black and white version. Yeah, and I yeah, I think it's the better of the two. Um, even though they did a, a really good job with the colorization. Um, so um, well, we know what you thought about the episode. I loved it. I like the dinosaurs. I love Sarah Jane in it. She's just so headstrong. It's awesome. Um, and the brigadier. So, yes, the Brigadier. Love the Brigadier. Um, it's just a fun episode. I mean, there's dinosaurs running amok in England, and they get there, and no one's in the streets, and they're like, what's going on? Which, I mean, so. I think one of my favorite things about this episode, or, or more so the DVD on this one, are some of the behind-the-scenes stuff they had on there. Well, I was going to talk about the story and then go into the Well, I know, but I'm just... But, but the, the reason why I brought that up right away was because you said the empty streets. Yeah. And it's interesting about how they actually got that footage because they kind of didn't do it illegally, but they sort of bent the rules horribly bad to get that footage. It was the director... And the film guy, because she knew him really well, they just went out at like four in the morning because in England it doesn't always get pitch pitch black dark like it does here. So they just shot all this stuff, and they did run across a policeman who just looked at them. They looked at him, and they just went their own separate ways. It's just a, it's just a cute little story because um, they actually interviewed the director and some of the behind the scenes stuff, and it's just it was wonderful hearing her talk about it. But yeah, this is, this is definitely, I think, a, a very strong Sarah Jane episode. Yes. Uh, it really shows her dynamic dynamic with John Pertwee quite a bit. Um, and one of the things, of course, made its debut in this episode was the Who Mobile. Yeah, the Who Mobile. Yes, which um, actually I thought it had more appearances than it did. It only had three. Three. Yeah, three appearances, and this was the very this was the first one. Um, and we have the Who-Mobile thanks to uh, actually John Pertwee. He actually purchased that ep that that vehicle, and after he showed it off, they uh, said, "Yeah, we will uh, we'll use it." Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he was very much a gadget man, from what I understand. But um, what did you think about the um, environmental? Well, I was going to say undertones, but it pretty much slammed in your face overtones yeah. about the about the. Uh, destruction kind of, of the earth and very stuff. Very a political episode, kind of. Yeah. It was, and it was very kind of thrown in there just out of the blue, too, because I remember, like, once they show Sarah Jane waking up in this place, I'm just like, w wait a minute, what? Yeah. What's going on? It's very, it's just thrown in there. There's no, like, hint to it. It's just kind of like, there's dinosaurs. Yeah. Now she's supposedly on this spaceship yeah. somewhere. What? What? Yeah. So, and it's, it's the same in the book, because the book, I... I read the book of this before, and this the is book. the book. It's actually written by the same guy that wrote the episode. 
And this is the original, it's from... Yeah, because back in the day, they didn't have VCRs and VCR yeah, tapes. Yeah, so this was first printing 1979. This episode aired in 74. Yeah, so, so. the only way to and rerun episodes, if you want to watch or read, yeah. were the and books. so for me, for Classic Who, they were either episodes copied from PBS by my boss at the comic book store. Yeah. And so I would watch them there because he had just all these episodes that he had copied himself. And he just had them at the store, or I read the books. And so that was a lot of the older stuff that I got to be exposed to. And I love to read, so you can ask him. I was ton if I, we go to a convention and I find Doctor Who books I don't have, and I'm just like, <gasps> it, it's the same for me in the audios, too, though. Yeah, so. she stole some people's prizes that way. I did not. I kept one of those books, and, and most of those people didn't even go for the Doctor Who books right away. Actually, they went for other stuff. Actually, the cool thing is they actually they went, went for one of your anthologies. They went for one of my anthologies, so that was kind of cool. I really thought that people would take the Doctor Who books first and then go for the other things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember watching this one when I was a kid. Um, probably younger than you. Well, when I first saw it. You are older than me. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I mean, what age did you start watching Doctor Who? Holy crap, I don't know. I have no idea. It was like, I don't know, it was probably eight, nine. Yeah, see, I can't actually remember when I first saw, the, saw I, some of these I episodes. I don't remember. I mean, because I always watch, I would just turn TV on, and if it looked cool, or if it was yeah. sci-fi stuff, I would watch it automatically, so yeah, well, it could have been earlier, but... Yeah, but for me, I mean, I, I always knew Doctor Who. I mean, some of my earliest memories were Doctor Who, and, I mean, me being a little, a little kid, and, you know, being a boy, you know, boys are, supp are supposed to like dinosaurs, and I really did like dinosaurs, so I thought it was cool, you know, seeing a doctor go up against dinosaurs. My favorite movie growing up was Lamb Before Time. Yes, I know. My favorite movie now is Jurassic Park. Yes, so, that's why I got you the animation so from yeah, Land Before from Time. Land Before Time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with the what, with little foot. Little foot. But, yeah, no, yes. Yeah, it's pretty um, sweet looking. But no, um, and this wouldn't. I mean, honestly, this wouldn't be the last time that, especially this era of who, um, who are the producers? Uh, uh Barry Letts and and um. Uh, and I forget who the who, who his partner was during that time. They did quite a few uh, environmental, political episodes. Yeah. Uh, Those political undertones aren't undertones in this episode. It's no. just kind of like there's this, they're fighting dinosaurs. There's they have a T Rex ca and captive, and then bam. <laughs> and this is also this colony of people on a ship. And this this episode also has the betrayal of one of the secondary characters. Uh, one of the unit guys mm -hmm. that had been in, I forget which one, I forget unit his name. Unit kind of has this big problem. Yeah. Like well, no, what's his name? The of um, let's see if they, they mention his name. Not okay, to. they don't mention his name, but um, yeah, um, one, of, one of the regular unit agents, that uh, officers that was, that was in quite a few episodes, ends up betraying everybody, um, which I think is a huge thing because that's the first time you had a, a major good guy, in a sense, betray the doctor, mm -hmm. Uh, even though in the end he does make it up and, you know, he gets dishonorably discharged. And the cool thing is, um, a couple of years ago, I really, I really want to look up what this character's name is. They did an audio where they brought, brought that character back um, with, I think, it, and I think it was one of the first Tom Baker episodes, mm -hmm. um, first audios that he did as the doctor, um, where where you find out what's happened to this happened to this guy because it's also another environmentally uh, conscious episode, I believe, from what I've been told. Um, Doctor Who people really like these environmental conscious sometimes. episodes. I mean, well, I mean yeah. look at Seas of Doom. I mean, they're a whole bunch. Look at um, what's that horrible movie you made us watch? The Ear Zone Solution. Oh my that god, that was amazing. It was but awful. I mean, but I'll admit this: when I was a kid, did I see those political? No. Undertones, no. overtones, no. It's like, oh my gosh, there's people on a ship. Cool. It was, it was dinosaurs, spaceships, and you know, I didn't even realize somebody from Unit betrayed the Doctor because I, I didn't make my that connection that that was a, an important character until later on because you know they had Benton in there, they had the Brigadier, and for me with Baker, I mean, it was those two guys. Later episodes of John Pertwee, it was those two guys were the important people in Unit. Um, it, you know, and this other guy. Um, wasn't because where I was, they didn't show a lot of the older John Pertweets um, with, um, with with what's her name? Um, K 
Kate, um, the, the Joe Grant. Um, so I didn't get a lot of that character. So I didn't realize there, there was that important, you know, piece there that I realize now. Because uh, this we, we saw them betrayer. all just out of place. And yeah, I mean, anybody who watches that PBS understands. Yeah, yeah, it was just everywhere. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy that kids nowadays won't ever have the experience of PBS and their random episodes, episodes of Who. They just randomly see what comes on Sci-Fi or BBC or whatever they show in the middle of the day, just randomly between Tenet and... You don't really see much Eccleston on there, though. No, because, I mean, Tenet was, was Lots the money Lots of just random Tenet episodes or random Smith episodes. Yeah. They do occasionally on BBC show some, like, Colin Baker yeah. and stuff like that, just in the middle of the day. Yeah. So. But, oh, sadly, we're not in... Well, no, BBC America. Really? Yeah, middle of the day, they'll show, like, at, like, 1 o'clock, they just show an hour of Doctor Who. Really? Yeah, every once in a while. I remember, well, so like, clicking through, it. so, because I'll just be messing through my channels, and there's Doctor Who, and I'm like, yay! They occasionally do, like, little marathons, too. Oh, it's that's great. awesome. Yeah, um, it just depends on what random day they decide to do it. So what else do you want to talk about? about the um, let's talk about, business. like, just the DVDs. We haven't actually done, like, reviews of what they look like and stuff for some people. I mean... This the is BBC one of the is popping them out too. This isn't one of the special editions. Yeah, this is a standard single this one disc. Was still priced as a special edition price though. Yes, it was. So, but it's really oh, it was like, a two disc. It's a two disc. They have the one disc with the episodes, and then you yeah. have all the special features on another yeah. disc. And these things have some amazing yeah. special Actually, features. Actually, you know something? I'm really surprised they, that it didn't come out as a special edition because it's two discs. Because all the two discs normally are special editions. Yeah. All the single discs are not. Unless it was just a mistake that's supposed to be special edition. I have yeah. no idea. It might have been misprinted. But they all, and they always tell you when they were originally transmitted, mm -hmm. what year, and what and days. And the, the story number, which is yeah. important. This is great. I love this because they say this on the back of them. So you can kind of keep them in order as yeah. you come along. Because all the stories aren't just four episodes. They're not just three and episodes. they have really sweet stuff on the back. Um, so you can see that. I'm probably way too close to yeah. the camera. I can't really see because yeah. you have it turned that way. Yeah. But um, that's the thing is. And they oh, always right. tell you who the companion is with them because it says starring. Yeah. And then they have on the back. like You have all these really cool little extras. You have audio commentary. You have. Um, they tell you who the audio commentary is with. You have all these really cool specials. And this one actually has a really cool special on the puppets. You have deleted scenes, you have now and then, you have just all this yeah. really cool, you have John Pertwee and his Who-mobile, which is yeah. like a one minute special type thing. Yeah. Um, you have Doctor Who stories, and Elizabeth Sladen's done a couple of these on the different DVDs, I believe. Yeah, this before part she one passed. Where she kind of kind of just talks about like I guess how Pertwee made her life miserable. No, no, no. Oh no, was it Baker made her life miserable? Which one? Oh no, no. Oh, I, the oh. photo gallery, PDF materials, and radio time listings, yeah. production notes. Just all kinds okay. of cool stuff. Let me, let me go through this. I actually watched all, all the specials on here. Um, I, I haven't listened to the audio commentary yet. Um, the People, Power, and Puppets, that was really interesting because they, they talked about how they did the puppet effects. Yeah, that's um, so cool. And the thing was... Very cheesy, but cool. Was that they were promised one thing and they were delivered something else. Um, basically, the people didn't carry through with what they said they were going to do for the puppets. Um, I'd love to see the original pitch. But they don't talk about that. Um, don't get me wrong. The pups are cheesy, but they're a lot of fun. For the um, 70s, they're pretty cool. Looking. Yeah. Um, but supposedly they were told they were going to be like realistic. I mean, truly realistic dinosaurs. It didn't happen. Come on. There's not going to be like raptors yeah. running through no. this, the London. Um, the deleted scenes, um, they're kind of interesting. Most of them are just longer versions of scenes that are already in there. Um now and then was kind of cool because they actually took you to and showed you the the places they filmed then versus what they look like now what's happened to them that was really fascinating to see you know because some places look identical some places have totally changed and that's just cool to see the evolution of just london itself and where they where they used to film the stuff um yeah, Billy Smart Circuits with John Pertwee and his Who-Mobile, that's, that's really awesome because they talk about the origins of the Who-Mobile um, and things like that, which was pretty cool. Um, the Doctor Who stories with Elizabeth Sladen, I just, I wanted to cry um, just because it's, it's Liz, being Liz, um, talking about her time on Doctor Who and John Pertwee um, and just how John took her right under the wing and just treated her almost like a daughter. I mean, he was he was 
from what she says, an extremely classy, classy individual. And um, she didn't realize what she was getting herself into. Um, and John treated her like an equal just straight from the beginning with the show. Um, and yeah, she, she had no idea because, I mean, John just basically just put her out there and just let the world see who Sarah Jane was. So she, um, when they were first introduce, introducing her on set, when because a bunch of reporters were talking to John on, on set of the um, Time Warrior, and he's like, oh, come come over here and, and meet everybody. And I was like, this is my new companion. And she was just, was not prepared for what was to come. Um, but yeah, this, this, was, this one had phenomenal, uh, yeah, yeah. Isn't it lots of really cool extras. Yeah. Have you watched much most of them yet? I haven't got to watch all of them yet, but I really want to watch the puppet one just because I make a lot of puppets for stuff, and so it's really cool to see stuff from yeah. then. And, yeah. yeah. They don't really. They, they, of course, unfortunately, they didn't go into the process because. Yeah, they um, didn't do it in house. They yeah, they didn't do it in house, and somebody else did it, um, and like I said, they didn't deliver. But you know. I'm fine either way because I mean it just adds to the charm of Doctor Who, um, and you know so what if if they're cheesy dinosaurs? It just I enjoyed it. I mean I, I really I really enjoyed this. It, you know it brings back you know childhood memories um, from when I first saw it um, when I was really big into dinosaurs and I saw it. Ankylosaurus is my favorite dinosaur. Of course, there's no Ankylosaurus in this, but I mean I really do like um, the invasion of the dinosaurs. A lot of fun, and it was really cool because, like I said, I read the book before I saw it. So, so how okay? How does the book compare to the to the um, to the DVD? To, um, the, to the act, the book really it's very very like it follows it really well. But, but do, like I know with Castor, well, I can't wait till we get to when we talk about Castor Valva because I just listened to the audio the 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 reading of of the the, the novel by Peter Davidson and like. In the novelization, you know, you get a little more insight into some what the, some of the characters are thinking, um, and like some scenes are just tweaked a tad. I mean, do you get that in there? Do you get more inner thinkings of the characters about why they their motivations not, that you not can remember? Too much. I'm trying to also try to remember because I read this a while ago. But I mean, even if you read the back of the book, it gives you a little bit more of an idea of what's going on in the story compared to just watching the episode. Yeah. So you're kind of a little bit more prepared. But sadly, these are out of print. They haven't reprinted these, so which they are slowly doing. Um, they just they they just made an announcement of the next six uh, books that they're reprinting. Yeah, I got the the new ones that they just reprinted because trying to find these is a pain in the butt. Yeah. Like I have been to the I have the ones that I originally have, but trying to go to like I just yeah. swarm to use bookstores all over the place looking for old Doctor Who books, and it's yeah. Well, I already have a large collection of them anyway, so finding holes in there is Yeah, hard. but were they going to release another six? Because those first six sold so well, they were like, let's get these others out there. This sucks because they have awesome covers. Um, yeah. So, I don't want to buy ones I already have, though. I don't need to have seen book. So, um, anything else you want to say about uh, Invasion of the Dinosaurs? It's an awesome episode. I would definitely pick up the DVD. I don't know if there's not really rental places are kind of going extinct. But. Yeah, but they never really ever had the DVDs. Um, you can watch some of the old episodes on Netflix. You could get some of. You can also get some of the episodes on iTunes. Um, but if you're a person who really likes the extras and the special features, pick up the DVDs. The oh. special editions normally have all the extras, and you can look on the back, and it'll tell you what they have. Yeah, but. I mean the 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 extras have just been. I think, I. Th because normally when I when I buy these DVDs now, I don't sit down and watch the episodes. I sit down and I watch the extras because I find them so fascinating. Because um, it's just it's just an insight into an, another world of filmmaking, of, of t a television making, and just how they how they used to do it. Um, and it's really cool, like because they've taken some of the older episodes and they're doing special editions. And they actually had an article in this month's Doctor Who magazine all about this. Yeah. So that was really cool to watch and figure out, like, to see what they pick. Yeah. They pick specific ones because some of them are already out on DVD, and they just go, you know, this this one could use a little bit more love. We could remaster it a little yeah. bit and release it. And we well, have a bunch of extra stuff. So the interesting thing that you should mention that is um, on Tomb of the Cybermen, which we'll be reviewing shortly. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about the new video process that they're doing because they're actually turning some of the episodes they don't have into little animated. Yeah, but like with things. like s some of the episodes that they have that are black and white that are really grainy and stuff, they've developed this special process 
of making it look like it looked when it was originally transmitted. Yeah. They talk they talk all about this process and the love that these guys are, are doing for these old black and whites is absolutely phenomenal. Especially when they put the, the comparison pictures together, like what the old DVD looked like versus what the new DVD looks like and the process that they've gone through. I mean, it it's really amazing. And then there's another group of people that are helping uh, redo some of the special effects. Um, I don't have any of those DVDs yet that, that have the new special effects in there, but there's this, this, this fan group that's been doing extra special effects like taking some scenes and adding more dialects or like with us, I think it's Snake Dance. Um, a phenomenal episode, but it has this really cheesy snake in it. Well, what they did is they went back, and I have not seen this yet, but they did this new CG snake that looks phenomenal. Um, and it's great that the BBC is, when you get, especially with the special editions, they let you watch the episodes either way. Yeah with the old effects or with this new effects laid on it. And I gotta say that I think that's really awesome the BBC letting us view who like like with Invasion of the Dinosaurs, you can watch it as the black and white episode or as the color episode. I think it's great that they're that they're doing this, especially since, you know, the special editions are running about twenty nine ninety nine and the standards US. Yeah, US and the uh standard ones. 1999. So, I mean, even the, even the standard 1999 ones have some great special features on there, but they don't go beyond the Call of Duty, like with the special editions. And one thing, the article I was mentioning earlier, they're also talking about is there are missing episodes. They have part of the stories, but yeah. all of them. They're actually going through, and um, BBC is working with this one group that's animating yeah. some of the episodes. So that's really cool to know that we'll get some of those episodes that they only have three of, and there's maybe like five of them in that story. And yeah. we're going to get those on DVD soon. Which, I mean, which is... Really, I mean, season, uh, season five of, of Trouton. Oh yeah. That, so that, many episodes. That one's almost on. that one's almost completely missing. The only complete story out of the bunch was when they just released Two Men Cybermen, which we'll be talking about soon. And if you actually, if you pick up that episode of Doctor Who magazine, they have photos from some of the lost episodes. Yeah. The episodes that we'll never see because the the film was totally destroyed. Yeah. They have photos of some of the characters from it, though. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah, uh, and I really enjoyed the first box that they did, uh, Lost in Time, mm -hmm. and supposedly they're getting ready to release a second volume, yeah. which... They talk about that in that article which as well. Which I will, I will jump all over that because I, I just really enjoyed some of these Lost episodes, um, and I love the fact that BBC has released some of the audios, mm -hmm. the audio tracks, because those did survive. Um, I've listened to Marco Polo, which was absolutely phenomenal, um, and I just got, I haven't listened to it, um, what is it? It is, um, The Evil of the Dialects, which is one of the legendary lost, now lost episodes of the Dialects, which actually introduced, uh, the second Doctor's companion, Victoria, um, and the only fully, uh, full episode that they've released on DVD so far that has her in it is... Uh, Tomb of the Cybermen, because like I said, most of that season is gone except for just snippets of an episode here and none of the full stories. And it's really cool because you just really want to know where she came from at the beginning of Tomb of the Cybermen because she's in this awesome dress and then she's she's put into like style from that time and she's yeah. like, what's this dress she is was, rather short. <laughs> she, I think, quickly became, has become my favorite companion, but of course we'll talk more about Victoria, yeah. well, we um, Tomb, Tomb of the Cybermen, Cybermen which will probably be happening in the upcoming weeks because as you can tell we we're, we really want to talk about it, you can tell um but since, it's since we haven't had the new who we've been all watching classic who yeah. so and the bbc has really pumped up the release dates yeah, of classic who bringing those dvds out every week it's awesome yeah um because yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to some of the ones that are coming out in april um that's the next batch mm -hmm. so uh so do you have anything else you want to say about uh per we Sarah Jane, Liz Sladen, Invasion of the Dinosaurs. I love Sarah Jane as a companion. She was just so headstrong. And the ending of this episode was just so awesome where she's like, I'm not going anywhere else with you. And Percy's just, his doctor is just like, well, you know, I am going to go here. But if you don't want to go, you know, this place looks awesome right now. But, you know, you don't want to go. And you can just see her character just like, okay, let's go. Yeah, I mean, because she finally also made it back to Earth finally. Yeah. Because um, it had been a while. Because, I mean... So, but it's yeah. just the... I guess kind of also the chemistry between those two characters. It's just so awesome. And 
it's just fun. Yeah, they had, they had, so. they had, I said they, they had some great, great chemistry. Um, and like I said, I mean, it's really sad that, that we lost Liz. Um, I really want to do the Time Warrior, um, but that's not on DVD. That was released on iTunes, which I'm going to have to, we're going to have to sit down and watch that one together. Um, but yeah. Um, but yes, you should totally check. If you haven't seen it, check out Invasion of the Dinosaurs and hopefully we didn't spoil it all for you. I mean, we didn't really no, we say didn't, too no. much. So, so okay, on, let, let's do it like this because we haven't done, we, we should, with these Classic Who episodes, I think we should actually rate it on a scale of one to five TARDISes. Um, what, and, 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 I'll, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll put this somewhere on the DVD or on, on, on the video release, we'll, we'll actually rate it by little TARDISes. Um, how many TARDISes of one to five scale would you give this episode? Five, I would say somewhere around like three and a half, four. I really liked this episode, so. I mean, it, it's a phenomenal episode. And the fact that, you know, they were using a, a very early version of, of like green screen, blue screen here. And they were acting against a lot of these puppets. They didn't. They didn't actually get to see them. And I think and they did a really good job. their budget at this time, those dinosaurs did look really yeah. cool. Yeah, and, and, the, and the thing was, is the director even said that you know she did not want to direct a science fiction episode. Um, and I think she got some phenomenal performances out of the actors that she had. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give it you know three and a half, four, four Tardises easy. Um, Without without a second thought, because um, I really do think it. The only it was thing that doesn't good. get me higher is just because in that in the middle of it, where you're just kind of like, wait, what happened? Yeah, there there are a few that moments. Whole, that story just kind of jumped. <laughs> yeah, so. it, it it did jump. Um, and you're you're kind of just kind of there, like, wait a minute, did they just put the wrong episodes on the DVD? And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Um, but of course, with Doctor Who, it, it, it's known to make those weird jumps. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely give this. Um, Three and a half, four, or four TARDISes. So where do you want to put it on the scale between us? I'm going to say four. Well, okay, well, uh, this is, well, basically what we're saying is four TARDISes, it's worth the money, four and it's five. five TARDISes, and it's definitely worth the money um, to pick this one up. Yeah. Because, I mean, honestly, it is $29.99. It is one of the more pricier ones. It should have been released with the name Special Edition. It wasn't, but it pretty much is. You get a whole disc of special features, which is really cool yeah. to see. But yeah, I would I would definitely give this a solid um, four TARDISes. It, I think it's worth your money to check out. Um, and uh, this is uh, Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off. Until next time. Um, and if you're watching this episode currently, um, we'll see you at RavenCon. Yeah, in two weeks in RavenCon in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. And if you have any questions or any comments about the episode, this is normally posted on YouTube. Put them down there or even write them on our Facebook page. Our or, Facebook page is Galfrey Pirate Radio. Look us up, like our page. Or, you know, you can always send us an email, galfreypirateradio at gmail.com. And if you actually watch to the end of the credits for, for the past two episodes, I have actually put something special there. So you might want to check out and see what, what the last line of the credits says. Because uh, you might just get something special if you actually make it to the end. So, but this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off, and we'll see you guys at RavenCon. Yeah. Bye. I'm sorry about the crappy dinosaurs. Don't, don't take that role. Then take it if you like it, or people aren't going to want to watch it. No, 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 no. The dinosaurs were good for the time that it was made. It was made in like the 70s, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah like I said, the BBC more. weren't happy, which I will talk about that. Excuse me. But no, I enjoyed this one. Oh, no, that's why I bought it. Oh, there's a dinosaurs. Yeah. Oh, and I have our, um, these were my purse. <laughs> so. And that's, I actually brought those so we could like hold them up and see them see you and stuff. Why? It's Invasion Dash on DVD because we're going to talk about Oh, yeah. I think you're talking about the. Uh, no, that's why I also I thought you were talking book. about the flyers. I know. I'll put them down so we can. Oh, no, I was, I was checking real quick. The guy that wrote this actually did the novel adaptation, too. Most of them did. So that's why I was just double checking. Yeah, most of them did. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Are you ready? I am ready. Let's 